My name is Septimus, alias Corvinus. I am a farmer and a loyal subject to our great new emperor, Quintus. This is the tale of my past and how I came to be here telling you this story. One day, our once benevolent ruler, Curius, fell into a fit of rage. His daughter had died from a deadly disease and cruelly he took it out on those around him. On that same day, my family, consisting of my wife and one very dear child, as well as myself, decided to go to a gladiator match, completely oblivious to what had occurred. We had front row seating, and we were all very excited to enjoy the show. I went to use the bathroom, only to come back to find my family gone. Curious, upon entering the stadium, had thrown them, as well as the other people in the first two rows, into the pit, where they sat screaming helplessly in front of an army of enraged lions. I screamed, kicked, even bit the guards training me, in a frenzy to save them, but to no avail and I watched in horror as they were both slaughtered before my eyes. I made a vow that day to avenge my family and to keep fighting, no matter what, until Curious was dead. As I tried to come up with a plan of action, Curious continued to murder people on mere whims, killing even some of his best friends and advisors. Outraged, his own sister, Clovia, attempted to assassinate him, only to be stopped by a Praetorian guard loyal to them. Shortly afterward, Clovia was executed. Another attempt was made at Hirius' life by a Praetorian Prefect, Tertius. Somehow, a group of soldiers managed to warn Hirius, and once again he was spared from the death he deserved. Tertius was executed, and his successor was also killed soon after. Meanwhile, Hirius became increasingly insane, going on crazy murdering sprees that often occurred in the gladiator ring. I knew then that I must be the one to assassinate him. Even when everyone else failed, I knew that I could pull through be the one to finally kill him and avenge my family, and thus I devised a plan to destroy the Emperor Hirius once and for all. First, I had to become a Praetorian Guard, earning the Emperor's trust and leaving him vulnerable and easy to attack. But becoming one was not easy. I trained for hours every day, pushing myself both physically and mentally, all my thoughts on avenging my family. After a year of vigorous workouts and non-stop swordplay training, I was finally ready and was sworn in as a guard to the Emperor. Unfortunately, I had to keep all communication about the plot and other suspicious actions to a minimum, for Hirius's network of spies and assassins constantly found and executed anyone who dared to show the slightest resistance to the Emperor. This made it nearly impossible to successfully carry out a plan against him. Also, the Emperor now had a special night guard to protect him in his sleep, and the door between him and any prospective assassin was nearly impenetrable. Slowly, my rank grew as a demonstrated prowess in battle and military strategy, and after another two years of hard work, I became a Praetorian Prefect, an extremely prestigious position, second to few. I built up friendships with other guards with similar goals as mine, and slowly, my plan started to take shape. I would sneak into the palace in the dead of night, accompanied only by my trusted accomplice and fellow guard, Titus. Then, we would slip past the guard, a muscular brute who had given a sleeping concoction earlier that day. When we got to the Emperor's bedchamber, my friend hesitated, saying that he wasn't sure that murdering Curious was the right thing to do. He was a good man, with a wife and two daughters who would be destroyed for anything happened to him. Still, I couldn't help feeling angered by a sudden outburst and knew I couldn't afford to let him ruin my plan. Get out, I yelled. If you aren't willing to kill Hirius, then you can't have any part of this plan. Scram! Tiptoeing past the guard, I silently walked over to Hirius' bed. Unfortunately for me, the guard wasn't actually asleep. Gruggily, he raised his sword and started after me. Desperately, I sprinted past him and into the hallway, bumping into Titus, who clumsily fell onto the floor. Moments later, I heard him screaming in agony as the guard, who had found Titus on the floor, stabbed him in the side. I got away safely, but I'll never forget what happened to Titus, who was executed the next day, to the utter dismay of his family. After coming so close to success, I had failed in my mission. Also, my dear friend Titus was dead, an unbearable consequence to my foolhardy actions, and I grieved his death for weeks. However, I knew I must proceed, now to avenge both my family and Titus, and end my misery. The Emperor and his spies never discovered who Titus' mysterious partner was, but they became more alert and started posting sentries on the walls and inside the halls. Silently, I hatched a new and improved assassination plot. By a lucky coincidence, one of my friends had been promoted to the Emperor's Night Guard, 
giving me a way into his room. I would wait for my friend to take his shift, then creep into the palace inside the bedchamber, at which point I would slit Thyreus's evil throat. Though very simple, I felt my plan had a great advantage over the other failed ones, as I was still a trusted Praetorian guard. Entering the palace went very smoothly, but as I skulked through the halls, I encountered a young servant girl on her midnight shift. Jaw dropping, she yelled for help and scrambled to get away from me, but stumbled blindly. I couldn't let her go, as she would sound the alarm and spoil my plans, but I didn't have time to properly secure her, and I didn't want to kill her. However, I sadly realized that it was the only way I could proceed without being caught, and somehow summon the strength to kill her. At this point, nothing would stop me from killing Hirius, even if others had to suffer at my hand. As I entered the bedchamber, I suddenly tripped, awakening the startled Hirius, who was scared out of his wits. What do you want from me? I can give you anything, anything in the world. Just please don't hurt me. As I stood over him, knife in hand, a wave of emotion swept over me. My family, I whispered. I want my family. But what I felt then was not anger. All those years I spent trying desperately to kill Hirius, it was all useless. Killing him wouldn't bring my family back as much as I wanted it to. It would only bring on more pain and suffering, more unnecessary deaths, like those of my friend Titus and the poor young servant girl. With regret, I now realized how similar we were, both driven into killing by the loss of loved ones. I couldn't kill Hirius. Not now. Not ever. Deflated, I surrendered my sword. Here, I said, I no longer mean you any harm. Just stop your cruelty. I beg of you. You lost your daughter. I lost my wife and child. But we must move past that now. Live our lives the best that we can. No, he replied. I realize my mistakes now, and it's too late to change them. Too terrible to move on. You were right in trying to kill me. Forgive me. This is how it must be. <sighs> Hirius died that day, blood to death from a self-inflicted wound. But he died a good man, not some deranged psychopath who couldn't care less for those around him, but a good, well-intending person. Though I'm sad he couldn't live to rebuild himself, and grieve for the great ruler he used to be, as well as my family, I feel like I have a clean slate now, and that my sadness will pass.